So this here is a timing machine for mechanical watches. And what this is doing is it's telling me exactly the rate of a watch instantaneously, what that daily rate is and what the amplitude is. The rate right now is about plus five seconds a day, which is perfect. That's really good for a mechanical watch. The amplitude is 280 degrees, which is great for an automatic watch. If this watch is near a magnet that can actually break the boundary of the case, the crystal, the dial, and reach the movement itself, there will be timing errors. And I'll demonstrate that by putting this rare earth magnet on the dial of the watch. And you'll instantly be able to see the rate goes up, the amplitude drops, and there's a beat error that's introduced. The amplitude keeps dropping and dropping. The rate, however, is back within tolerance, but the amplitude is far too low. When I remove the magnet, it should return to normal. The amplitude will climb back up to about 280 degrees, and the rate should go back to about five seconds a day. This is a perfect example of outside magnetism affecting the movement. This would be if you had something magnetic like magnetic buttons on some clothing or a magnet in your cell phone near your watch and it can cause some timing errors but they won't last because the parts inside the watch have not been magnetized they were just affected during the time the magnet was nearby with a stronger magnet it can actually magnetize the movement parts and then the watch will become a magnet itself. If the watch has magnetized parts inside of it, then it will act as though a magnet is on it at all times. This is when you need the demagnetizer in order to get rid of that magnetic effect that's within the watch. So what I'll do is I will see if I can magnetize it through the case back because there's no dial shielding the movement and the escapement is right there. So if I can turn any of the screws or any of the steel parts inside of this watch into a magnet with this rare earth magnet, then we'll see the rate changes in a more permanent fashion. So I'll move this magnet around and see if I can magnetize a component. And now I'll remove the magnet and we'll see if that was successful. So now we can see that there is a small amount of magnetism held in one of the components inside of the watch, or maybe more than one component inside of the movement right now. That's why we have a slightly lower amplitude and our rate is up at about 18 seconds a day. So I was able to convert some of the materials inside of the watch into magnets. Now what I can do is I can take this watch and I can use my demagnetizer here which should remove that magnetism and it's a simple process there are a couple different types of demagnetizers that you'll see there are pass-through demagnetizers which you will have a circle and you'll actually pass the watch through that circle 
while the demagnetizer is on, or you will have one of these where you just set the watch down and you can hold it because sometimes parts can jump when you're demagnetizing because it's essentially trying to scramble the magnetism, uh, reorganize the electrons in the materials, and it's just the push of a button. As simple as that. So I'll do it a couple times just to make sure, especially since this is an automatic watch and we have an oscillating weight that could be covering some components that became magnetized. I'll also do a little on the dial side. And now we'll put this back on our timing machine and see if our rate went back down to, I think it was at about seven seconds a day with the dial down. And after having used a demagnetizer, the demagnetizer will actually cause the escapement to move because the hairspring has very little mass. So you want to give it maybe 20, 30 seconds to start running normally again. So here we can see the rate is back down. We're at about 12 seconds a day. And that amplitude came up, I think it was about 20 degrees. So I was able to remove the magnetism I put in there and get this watch running within spec again. I'll use a stronger magnet now to see if I can have even more effect on the timekeeping and the amplitude because that's what you'll see if you uh, have magnetism in your watch that is from traveling and going through uh, x-ray or metal detecting equipment. I have a bigger magnet now and I have a bigger watch. Using a larger watch it will be easier to hold more magnetism or to magnetize and actually affect the movement, which is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to show you what it might look like if we went through some kind of uh, x-ray equipment or metal detector at the airport and magnetized our watch. So with this manually wound movement, amplitude just over 300 is perfect, right where it should be, and a rate of about eight seconds plus a day. When I introduce the bigger magnet, and I've gotta be very careful with this one because it's quite strong. It actually completely stops the watch. And then I'll see if I can impart some of that and create a strong enough magnet within the watch that it causes some serious timing deviations. So here we can see I was able to actually create a relatively strong magnet that is now within the watch. I don't know which component is leading to this, but there is something inside the watch that is strongly magnetized to the point where the amplitude is under 200 and the rate per day is 250 seconds a day. So you'd pretty quickly notice how fast this watch is running. And this is a good example of what you might see after flying on an airplane, going through security and magnetizing your watch. So if you do have a timing machine at home and a demagnetizer, it will save you a trip to the watchmaker or it will save you having to ship your watch into a watchmaker. You can simply see from this trace of how fast this watch is running that it's magnetized. Then 
We can take it to our demagnetizer. Demagnetize it. And that was a pretty strong magnet, so I'm gonna do this a few times. And then we'll see if we were able to remove enough of that magnetism to get it back within tolerance. And it looks like we're back to normal. Just from three touches of a button. And a demagnetizer can be bought on Amazon or on eBay. They're really inexpensive. They don't have to be fancy uh, if you're just using them at home. Could be 10 to $20 for a demagnetizer. And then an inexpensive timing machine could be bought on eBay. Uh, might run about 50 to $100 for that. But the headache you save from having to bring your watch to a watchmaker to fix something so simple or having to pay to ship it or pay for repairs potentially, I think it's well worth it to do this little bit of watchmaking on your own. So this particular timepiece is actually advertised as anti-magnetic. And the reason it's advertised as anti-magnetic is because it has a silicon hairspring. And that silicon hairspring is not affected by magnetism. So it can't become magnetized, but it also is not affected by a magnet. There are other parts of the watch that are still affected by magnetism and can become magnetized meaning they are their own magnet. But it should be far less susceptible to having timing issues due to magnetized components or an outside magnetic field that is pulling on components. So we can do the same test with this watch and see what kind of result we get. So because this is an automatic watch, having an amplitude of around 280 degrees, I'm very happy with that. The rate is a little bit slow, but it's almost to zero seconds a day. If we introduce our rare earth magnet, let's see what happens. So the magnet increased our rate and decreased our amplitude. When we remove the magnet, it should go back to where it was right around zero seconds a day, or slightly slower, and about 280, 290 amplitude. So even with the silicon hairspring, the other components in the watch are still affected with a strong magnet right up on the watch like that. If I use my even stronger magnet, let's see if I can add magnetic field and actually magnetize a component and cause this watch to not run well even once the magnet is removed. If you'll notice, this timepiece with a silicon hairspring was not affected as greatly by that heavy or very strong magnet that on the other watch, it actually increased the rate by hundreds of seconds a day and decrease the amplitude by over 100 degrees. This watch, the rate went up about 12 or 13 seconds a day, but the amplitude is stable. 
So any components inside of here are not magnetized enough or by mass cannot become a strong enough magnet to cause serious timekeeping deviation in this particular watch. So this is why it's marketed as an anti-magnetic watch. A standard mechanical watch with a white alloy hairspring is going to be far more susceptible to magnetism and having the effects of magnetism remain within the watch than a watch with a silicon hairspring such as this one. There is still some magnetism in the watch so I can go demagnetize it just as I would any other watch which is good practice for a watchmaker because the first thing we want to do before we do any kind of regulation or determine whether the amplitude on a watch is good or if it needs further service is timing it out and demagnetizing it and timing it again. Now if you have a watch that has a hacking mechanism, meaning you can pull the crown out and actually stop the balance wheel from moving, that is best practice to do that, to stop the watch from running and demagnetize while the balance wheel is not moving. This will allow more efficient demagnetizing. It's not required though. Uh, this timepiece does not have hacking seconds. So I was able to demagnetize it with the balance wheel moving and it was still sufficient enough to bring it back within spec, even with this relatively inexpensive demagnetizer. Now you can see, having demagnetized this watch, it went back to its natural rate of just under zero seconds a day. We're at negative one and a half seconds a day, an amplitude of about 285. So whatever magnetism it was holding was so little that it was only able to change the rate by about 13 seconds positive a day. So that is a big benefit of a silicon hairspring. However, the downside to a silicon hairspring is that it is not a traditional watchmaking material and it's not something that can be modified by a watchmaker it has to be replaced with a new part. And it's not something that can be remade in the typical watchmaker's workshop.